If you're looking to keep notes around for an extremely long period of time, and I'm talking not to the scale of like one to five years, but of five, 10, 25, 50, 100 years, potentially even giving your note database as something you can pass down into the generations. Data portability is an important question to have in the back of your mind. Hey folks, my name is Justin with Effective Remote Work. Today we're going to talk about data portability with Obsidian and demonstrate just how possible this is using the VS Code extension Foam. But first, let's talk a little bit about what is data portability. Data portability is the ability for you to move your data to and from an application or a place on your computer or between computers. It's essentially the level of control that you have over your data and where it resides. A full-on SaaS application that has your data in a database has lower levels of portability. If you have the ability to export that data to markdown files, the portability increases a little bit, but you lose a lot of the functionality that that application gave you in the first place because there's a lot of fancy database stuff that happens with that. If your application like Obsidian puts your data inside of markdown files by default, then your data portability is much higher because one, you're controlling where those files are stored, and two, the default unit of data that you have is a markdown text file, which is a long standing format as it is. So why is data portability important? Well, let's talk through an example here first. I was a big fan of Evernote when that first hit the scene over 10 years ago. And to be honest with you, so were a lot of other people. Evernote was once heralded as the poster child of note applications. It really couldn't get much better than Evernote. But over the course of time, Evernote didn't handle their company very well, started losing trust with their user base, stopped shipping important updates to their software and shipped buggy versions of their software. And that was kind of a bummer deal. But the big kicker there is that Evernote used a proprietary format to store your notes. So when you export it out of Evernote, it wasn't just an easy transition to say, oh, I'm going to move my notes into Bear or Apple Notes you had to do this funky conversion dance and some of that information was lost in the process. Applications come and go. Rome won't be around forever. Notion won't be around forever. Obsidian won't be around forever. The people who run these applications won't be around forever either. But if you're looking at keeping your notes for a long period of time, you need to have the ability to move that data between different applications. Starting your data inside of text files, markdown files that have essentially been around since the modern age of computing where normal people use computers is a great way to ensure that your data is portable. Now I want to take a little bit of time to show you how this works using an application called VS Code and an extension that was written by a community member called Foam which introduces some Roam research like features to the application. Let's head on over to the app right now and I can show you exactly how this works. Okay, so here's my Obsidian Vault. If you've been paying attention over the last couple of months, you can see that my graph has grown uh, quite a bit. I've been importing some older notes, but again, at the core of all of this is Markdown files. And you know they're not locked into an Obsidian database or anything like that. All of these connections, all of these linked mentions, unlinked mentions are calculated based off of search terms and linking between the files. It's pretty cool what you can do. But because the core unit is Markdown files, you can pop this entire vault over into another application. You could use Zettler. You might even be able to use something like the archive if you use a single flat example uh, or, or flat structure for your database rather. Or what I'm gonna show you today is using a software called VS Code, which is a code editor, a text editor but there are extensions for it, such as Foam and a couple of other ones recommended by the Foam developer that you can use to build a similar experience to Obsidian or Roam Research inside of VS Code. Let's head on over to that application now. Okay, so here is VS Code. If you're not familiar with it, I definitely recommend downloading it and checking it out. There's a lot of cool things you can do with it. You might not necessarily need this unless you're doing some heavier text editing or if you're doing some development work. I don't generally use VS Code simply because I'm a Vim guy when it comes to coding, 
but I like using VS Code every once in a while to do some heavier text editing. It's good for you know, multiple cursor support. You can type the same thing in multiple places and the like. Right now I have the Marketplace tab opened here and I've filtered to all of my enabled extensions. At the top is Foam for VS Code, which is just a simple application that adds some uh, backlinks and update, updating the markdown reference lists and such uh, for you know the, the graph views and everything that goes on in here. And then these other three plugins or extensions are recommended by the Foam developer to give a more Roam type experience in VS Code. So there's Markdown All-in-One, it gives you keyboard shortcuts, table of contents, auto previews and stuff for Markdown, Markdown Links, which shows you backlinks or the knowledge graph view of sort here. And then Markdown Notes, which allows you to use Wikilinks, backlinks, and tags for navigation between your notes, very similar to Obsidian, Bear, and the like. Okay, I'm gonna head back here to the File Explorer tab, and then I'm going to open a folder. I've got my Vaults folder set up here, and I'm going to open up my Obsidian Vault. And as you can see, I have access to all of my files. I can open them all up, I can see them. There's automatic syntax highlighting, so it shows headings and wiki links and the like. If I'm looking at trying to find the backlinks to something, there's this little pane down here that I can open up and I can show all the backlinks, which is pretty cool. It's very similar to how Obsidian works. It just looks a little differently. There's this NPM scripts thing here, which is a little confusing. That's the one thing about using VS Code in this environment is that it can be, you get a lot of coding stuff that's in here too. You get outline view of the markdown file. So if you have a view or a document that has lots of headings, you can quickly jump to those different headings fairly easily, which is really helpful to navigate long files. Cool thing about VS Code 2 is that if you hold like Command Shift P on the Mac, you get a command palette similar to the command palette in Obsidian. Uh, one thing that you can do in here is you can type in commands. Of course, there's a thousands more commands in here. I don't, I don't know the exact number, but there's an infinite number of more commands in here than in Obsidian because this is designed for code editing and text editing. It's not just designed for taking notes, but there are different commands that you can run for Markdown, such as this show graph link here. If I open that up, it opens up another pane and it automatically generates a knowledge graph. Now, as you can see, it's definitely not as full at this point in time, and I'm guessing this probably has something to do with the fact that I'm using a lot of folders over here, but I haven't dove too deep into foam. The whole point here is I wanted to show you just how capable other pieces of software are in opening up your Obsidian Vault to be able to edit or look at or navigate the types of information that you're putting inside of Obsidian. That's really the key here. You can navigate through these files pretty easily over here. Let's see if I jump to that. Still learning the interface here a little bit, so forgive me for that. You know, I can jump into other files as well. Yeah, it's just kind of random. It's kind of jumping around and in and out of things. Um, it's honestly a really powerful experience to be able to say, hey, I can move my data to somewhere else if I, for some reason, don't like Obsidian anymore. I don't see that happening anytime soon, but just to have the ability to say, hey, my data is in a more long-term format is a really, really, I guess, comforting thing because the one thing that I think is important with data, taking notes, my own thoughts, journaling and the like, is that it's not just for me. I want my kids to be able to look back on it someday and say, wow, okay, these were the insights that my dad had. What can I learn from that and build off of that myself? Anyway, this is just a brief understanding of how you can port your data between applications using Obsidian. Even if you're not looking at trying to keep your notes super long term, Having the ability to use multiple applications to 
edit the same set of notes is also a very powerful thing too. If there are features missing in Obsidian that are in another application that you can load your notes up into, go for it, do that. That's the power of data portability, not only for the future, but also for today too. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to subscribe. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear if data portability is important to you. Also, be sure to check out our newsletter at effectiveremotework.com slash newsletter to stay up to date with all the content that we're putting out. Plus, keep tabs on the Obsidian Made Simple course that we are launching very soon. My name is Justin. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next video.